The patient is positioned in supine. Upper limb tension test 1 biases the median nerve. The therapist takes the patient's upper limb through the following movements. Shoulder girdle depression, shoulder abduction to 110 degrees, shoulder external rotation with the elbow at 90 degrees, forearm supination, wrist and finger extension, and finally elbow extension until symptoms are provoked. Upper limb tension test 2 also biases the median nerve. The therapist takes the patient's upper limb through the following movements. Shoulder girdle depression, shoulder abduction to 10 degrees, shoulder external rotation with elbow at 90 degrees, forearm supination, wrist and finger extension, and finally elbow extension until symptoms are provoked. Upper limb tension test 3 biases the radial nerve. The therapist takes the patient's upper limb through the following movements. Shoulder girdle depression, shoulder abduction to 20 to 30 degrees, shoulder internal rotation with elbow at 90 degrees, forearm pronation, wrist, finger, and thumb flexion, and finally elbow extension until symptoms are provoked. Upper limb tension test 4 biases the ulnar nerve. The therapist takes the patient's upper limb through the following movements. Shoulder girdle depression, shoulder abduction 110 degrees, shoulder external rotation with elbow at 90 degrees, forearm pronation, wrist and finger extension, and finally elbow flexion until symptoms are provoked. For any of these tests, to confirm that neurological structures are being stressed, contralateral side bending of the neck should increase symptoms and ipsilateral side bending of the neck should decrease symptoms. A test is considered positive if it reproduces the patient's symptoms or if there is a significant difference in mobility from side to side.